Today I have a terrible fidget spinner, at least for the price. It's the Galaxy Watch Active 2. This one is in pretty great condition, but took a drop or smash and won't turn on. The screen is fine though. It's a mechanical issue this time. The power button is jammed and in the pressed position. I'm guessing some of the metal frame got rolled over it and it's holding it down. Full disclosure, opening this does compromise the water resistance and the owner was informed, but I may have a solution later. At the bottom there are four tri-wing screws that secure the back panel and pulse scanner. After those are removed I'll use a metal pry tool to separate the back panel from the frame. I'm honestly not sure what this material is, but having opened Moto 360s in the past, I know this shiny stuff is pretty breakable. You can see the stringy silicone adhesive pulling away. Check where the ribbon runs before you fully lift it up. I'll need to disconnect this first. Usually this is where I'd say disconnecting the battery is pretty important, but we can't get to the battery connector yet, so everything else is free game. You should probably use a plastic pry tool, but in my case the battery is well below 0% and has probably reached its safety cutoff. Next I'll get the three screws out of the way. These don't seem to actually hold this board or assembly to the frame, it's more of a free floating design. very carefully lifting up the board as there is a ribbon cable soldered directly to the board below. However, this is what actually disconnected the battery. Those two gold contacts just to the left of the battery pack are the actual terminals. With a bit of persuasion, the entire battery pack and board can be lifted out. Still watch that tiny ribbon that's soldered on. Now we get a look at our physical button from the inside. The metal retainer is still on, which is good. With tweezers, I can push the button out and back in, but the spring action isn't happening. This is good news, it means I can push the button out of the frame. Removing the metal retainer clip, well the best thing I can say is to do it carefully. Most phone repair shops don't have the proper tool to correctly remove these, but most are capable of improvising. With that out of the way, I'll carefully push the button through from the inside, holding it as low to the table as I can. It does have some water resistance that provides friction when removing it. The button itself is spring-loaded, but the spring is free and can easily fly off. You do not want to lose this. Just like I thought, this drop or bash knocked just enough of the frame to bend the circular hole for the button. This puts friction on the button, keeping it depressed. That's not a problem. I have a Dremel tool that will cheer it right up. Time to test our button. Looks bouncy to me. Reinstalling the retainer clip is super important, and how you do it is up to you, just don't lose it. I was able to use my tweezers with surprising success. Perfect, the button actuates without an issue now, and won't be falling out either. Reassembly. I don't have the factory replacement for the adhesive, so I'm going to make do with a different silicone based adhesive and try to create as consistent of a line as I can. I'll also warn them again that this water resistance should not be trusted. Finally, I'll press the panel firmly down and tighten those four tri-wing screws. After some charging, this watch was back in action. Thanks for joining me, drop any questions below, and I'll see you next time.